Welcome to episode 52, Lying. Please turn on closed captioning so you can better follow the truth of what I'm saying. You know, I don't think, I don't think there's anyone in this world past the age of four who can say they've never lied. Of course, there are big blatant lies and little shade in the truth type of lies. And there are evil malicious lies and protective so-called white lies. But every adult human has lied about something sometime in their past. Even the Pope. When you think about it, you realize that lying, like the survival of the fittest concept, is part of man's nature. So when I say even the Pope, I'm not talking about him lying before he became a priest. I'm thinking that any adult who does a lot of public speaking, whether a politician or a pastor, constantly shades the fruit. Yes, my fellow humans, Sunday sermons are full of lies, little ones and sometimes big ones. Since I'm a well-worn adult, <laughs> I know I've told many lies in my lifetime, but I know I've told far, far fewer than most. Mistakenly asserting something to be true that turns out to be false doesn't count. But all lying is a considered choice. People lie to protect their interests. And that includes even those who look to justify the lying as being necessary to protect the interests of others. You protect someone's interests because doing so benefits you too. The benefit might be as innocent as just the satisfaction of protecting or helping them, but it's still a benefit. You get something from it. But my blog episode 38, Honesty, wasn't any epiphany for me. All my life I've always tried to be honest, even if I've not always been honest. The reason is because the first lie I ever told, or at least remember telling, scarred me mentally for life. It happened when I was six years old. It scarred me so much that, to me, it remains the biggest lie I've ever told because ever since that day, I've been ultra-conscious about lying and I've strenuously tried to avoid lying. So, most of my lies throughout the years since have been the shading the truth type sort of lies. But they are lies nonetheless. Internal joke. Guess you are still too much of a human, Paul. <laughs> but when I think of the people that's been close to me throughout my life, I ask myself if I've ever lied to any of them in a big way or made a promise I didn't keep. And apart from my ex or exes, perhaps, I find the answer is non-existent or rare. I bring up exes because breaking a promise to stay together is lying, no matter how you might want to shade it. But then, even with my exes, and it exes to be honest and clear up the ambiguity in my blog episode 20 what's a lover I've tried to make sure that even though we are no longer together we stay in contact and we may still be relatively close and even bound in some way and probably will be till death do us part so then I asked myself if those same people in my life have ever lied to me or made a promise that they didn't keep and it's rare or non-existent for me to find someone who has not lied to me way more than I've ever lied to them. To put that in more traditional language, it's a rare person in my life who has been as honest with me as I've been with them. Yes, it's difficult for me to find someone in my life who has never lied to me or tried to deceive me, even my exes. And I ask myself, why is that so? Why are the people I've been around been so dishonest with me? Well, I read this neat article by Mitchell S. Jackson in the New York Times recently, and I saw one potential answer that made me feel hurt. The article is called, We Went to Vegas to Rain Joy from Heartbreak. And I read it a couple of days before I was actually making a tri trip to Las Vegas. And I asked myself, 
Why is from in a title spelled with a capital F? <laughs> I know there's an internal joke in there somewhere. Internal joke must be the coincidence, Vegas. But seriously, or maybe hurtfully, there is this part where in talking about his forever buddies not being roped into gang life violence in their youthful days, Mr. Johnson says, Because we were all known as athletes, we were exempted from much of the fray. Nonetheless, not one of us could afford being pegged a punk. Punks lacked courage, confidence, strength. Punks shrank from conflict and as a consequence got punked. Too much confirmed punking caused the hood to question your manhood, or worse, deem it took. So we became hardened, hard, invulnerable. We often ran towards conflict just to prove a point. Hmm. So it hurt to think that living my philosophy of life, giving, sharing, looking to avoid or disarm conflict, means being considered a punk. It hurt to think that that may be why so many people seem to be always trying to punk me with lies. But Mr. Johnson goes on to say, that toughness worked as a sword and a shield, but it also, despite our closeness, made us harsh on one another, charge so much of our time together with aggression and imperative to attack, attack or defend. Which is to say, it left us songs, the compassion we needed to be better boys to one another. You know, perhaps it's not so much what's wrong or weak or punky about my philosophy of life as what's wrong or weak or essentially punky in the thinking of those who look at my philosophy of life that way. So, harking back to my blog episode 41, friends, if there have been punks in my life, perhaps it's my fault for the company I've been keeping. So what happened to scar me from lying? Should I leave it for another episode? Hmm. Well, at six years old, I was a student at this primary school in St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica. Next to the school, separated by a barbed wire fence, was a yard with a lot of naysbury trees. Naysbury's in Jamaica are these small brown-skinned fruits about the size of oranges with a fleshy, sweet-tasting brown interior with large black seeds in the middle. They are delicious. You can eat everything except the seeds. Well, no student at the us students at the school were expressively forbidden to go into the yard next door and steal naysbears. <laughs> and I never did until one day, while hanging with a couple buddies, I was goaded into venturing into the yard to thief some naysbears. No sooner had I stuffed a couple in my pocket, a shout was heard from the homeowner. There was a mad scramble by us boys to get back through the fence. And <laughs> in going through the fence, I scraped my back on the barbed wire. My shirt was sc scratched, but not torn. But a scrape on my back, back actually bled a bit. I went home and washed a shirt for the first time in my life. But that night, when my mom was giving me a bath, she saw the scrape. I mumbled something about it happening at school, and she jumped to the conclusion that it came from being struck by a teacher's cane. I didn't explain the truth, thinking the incident would pass. But my mom didn't let it go. A couple of days later, she was at the school confronting the teacher about caning me. The teacher gave me a look that made me shrink. It was a large class, and she came, caned a lot of students frequently, and she probably didn't even remember if she had ever caned me or not. 
but she knew she never struck any student in the middle of their back. I was basically mom throughout the whole back and forth between my mother and the teacher. My mother eventually calmed down with the teacher promising not to touch my delicate skin with a cane again. And she never did. She just basically ignored me for the rest of the semester, apart from the occasional withering look. I can still feel that look. It's made me a very honest person. For those who have watched this to the end, this object is something I picked up in Peru um, on a trip in 2019 to Machu Picchu.